Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts, opinions, and feels on wow. Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rose. This is the first book in a six book series and there's also a new spin-off series that's starting to release. I'm going to try to keep the summary vague of this book because I think it's just fun to just dive in and see what it's all about for yourself. Basically we follow three different kingdoms and throughout the story several different events lead to a war between these three kingdoms. This book was a wild ride and I was not expecting that going into this book. I did not fully prepare myself for this book. I should have spent more time preparing my feels because Morgan Rose messed with my feels. I was just so pleasantly surprised by this book and I'm so glad that I finally picked it up and read it because I absolutely loved it. It's just, ah, it's so good. It's so good. I think that this is a great introduction into the world of fantasy. If you are new to fantasy or you've been wanting to try out fantasy, I would highly suggest trying out the Fallen Kingdom series. The terminology isn't too hard to understand and the story isn't hard to follow. There is a massive cast of characters, but don't let that intimidate you because there's a point in the story where everything just clicks and you know who is who and you don't have a hard time keeping track of the cast of characters. It's really easy to follow. Trust me on this. This is a perfect introduction to fantasy. The plot was exciting. There's a point in the story where everything just gets so crazy and thrilling and you just get completely hooked on the story and the situation at hand. The one complaint I have about this book is that some things just clicked a little bit too easily for my liking. By that I mean there would be a problem and it would just be solved way too easily. But other than that, I loved this book so much. I would highly recommend picking this book up, especially if you're new to fantasy and you want to try out the genre. Pick up Fallen Kingdoms. It's a great introduction to the world of fantasy. But prepare yourself because this is a story where no one is safe. That's all I've got to say for the non-spoilery section. I'm now going to be jumping into a spoilery section. So go pick this book up, read it, and then come back for the discussion section. I'm going to start off by talking about when I first started getting sucked into the story. And that's when the king was just like, Yo, Tobias, peace out, sucker. I was holding the book. It happened. Then I dropped the book and gasped like there was no tomorrow. The king literally just had a spiel about how important his family was. And he just kills off his son like it's no big deal. Just like, later, Tobias. Later. Even though I was weirded out by Magnus' feelings toward Lucia, I still found it so humorous that he was like going around to people in the castle or like boys that were interested in Lucia and telling them that she had no interest in them and that they should just stay away from her. Because then we have this confrontation with Lucia and Michael and she's like, why is he acting so weird around me? Like, I don't understand this. And then she finds out what Magnus has been doing and she's just like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? It was just golden. I just loved that. Even though I was still weirded out, by Magnus having feelings for Lucia because at that point he didn't know that she wasn't really his sister and it was just weird. Just weird. I hate when that happens in books. I'm just like, can you not? This is gross. Stop. I was really annoyed at how easily Theon trusted Cleo to not go and escape and go get the seeds. Like, dude, dude, come on now. Come on now. Oh, I won't escape. I'm totally just going to go to bed. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Ha, <laughs> later, sucker. At first I wasn't sure if Irene could be trusted. She was kind of a little bit sketchy there at the beginning. I don't know why, but it just was like, I don't trust you. But then it became so clear that she was the Watcher. Even though she didn't come out and say that she was the Watcher, it was so obvious that she was. I did think it was really sweet that she had trusted Cleo and that she had sent along the seeds with her. But more about that later because just ugh. Ugh, just ugh. I'm really interested to see where Lucia's story goes in the next few books and all that she's capable of, that is if she survives the next few books because you know, Morgan Rhodes likes to kill off characters left and right. I really only feel like we got to see a tiny little bit of her capabilities within this book, so I'm interested to see all that she's able to do. I feel bad for her though because the king is totally taking advantage of her powers and he's probably just going to continue to take advantage of her until she's just had enough and she just backfires. So hopefully, you know what, that's something that I want to happen. I want that to happen. I want him to just like use her and use her and use her and then she'd be like, no, you can't use me no more. <laughs> and just like blow him up or something. The Cleo rescue just went a little bit too smoothly for my liking. Theon's just walking around aimlessly. Oh, hey, Nick, what's up, man? Oh, Cleo's over there, you say? Okay, bam, bam, bam. Rescues Cleo, all is good in the world. Except for the fact that they didn't decide to escape right then and there or hide or something. Like, why in the world did they think, oh yeah, let's just walk on this main road where everybody can see us and not try to get to our mainlands as fast as possible. Let's just walk here and then have Magnus come up and just slaughter Theon. 
I was so mad at Magnus when he killed Theon. Theon was my favorite character. He had become my favorite character at that point. And now he's just dead. Thanks a lot, Magnus. This was a point in the book when I literally screamed at my book. I read the scene, I screamed bloody murder, and just had to walk the room for a second because I just couldn't deal. I still can't deal. Still not over this death right now. Like, what? What? Why did Theon have to die? It made me so mad and I hate Magnus. Not only do I hate Magnus for that scene, I hate the fact that he took it upon himself to reveal to Lucia that she wasn't his sister. And I think the reason I'm not okay with it is because he used it as a way to validate the kiss between them. I would have been okay with him telling her had it been a different situation, but he used it as a way to make that kiss okay. And that is not okay that he did that. I just don't like Magnus. And people love Magnus, and I don't understand. How do you love Magnus? I don't get it. Maybe I'll like him in the next few books, but this book, he did some stuff where I was just like, you are bad. You are so bad. <laughs> That's the worst thing I can think of right now. You're terrible, Magnus. Okay, now about the healing seeds situation, because this frustrated me so much. I was so angry with Cleo because she gets the seeds and she's like, oh, awesome, I can heal my sister. Oh, I could have healed Theon, has a mental breakdown, which is fine. She obviously wasn't over Theon's death, like it j just happened, so I completely understand that mental breakdown, and that's totally cool. But then she just like takes her sweet time to get to her sister to heal her, and by the time she gets there, her sister's dead. Like, what? You have the healing seeds, you went on this big mission to get the healing seeds, and you failed, but then you came back and you have them. You need to run to your sister and don't let anybody stop you. You go, 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 and you heal her, but no, no, we get there, and her sister is dead, and just, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I was sad for Cleo, though, because then her father dies, and she's just dealt with three major deaths. Give the girl a break. Give her a break. So now she's got to find a way to take control of things and get rid of the King of Limeros. But then, of course, little old Magnus, our favorite little Magnus, comes over and takes her into captive, so who knows what's going to happen next. I really like how Jonas' story is taking a completely different direction, though. He was, like, realizing there at the end that this was all a terrible mistake and that the king is an awful human being. It was really interesting seeing how his story was, like, kind of going in a completely different direction, and I'm so excited to see where his story goes in the next book. I feel like he's gonna help Cleo in some way, and I'm just really excited for Jonas' story because I really like Jonas. Basically, Fallen Kingdoms was amazing. It slayed me in the best way possible, and I'm excited to continue on with this series. You guys should let me know down below some of your favorite moments from this book, and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Later. Even though I was weirded, even though I was weirded out about Magnus' feeling, Magnus' Magnus' This was a point in the book there, this was.